What's up guys, hello and welcome to part two of our video describing how to do a whole home audio using Home Assistant, Moppity, and Snapcast. So thank you guys for continuing to watch and for coming into this one. If you need uh, to check out the part one of this, I'll have the link somewhere up in the top here uh, on a card so you guys can check out part one of this. Here we're gonna be checking out how to do the hardware side of it and how to tie Home Assistant into all of this. That sounds like something you'd be interested in. Stay tuned, because it's coming up right now on M.I. Sperry. We need to configure this to actually uh, work with, uh, actually output sound, you know, to actually, actually work. So in order to do that, first thing we need to do is we need to change up some configs, okay? So if you look at the GPIO pins on a Raspberry Pi, GPIO, read all, you'll get this list and it's basically all the physical pins that are on your list and it will show you, and this is part of the wiring Pi stuff that's already with Raspbian, comes with it. Um, what we're looking at is PCM 18 and PCM 13. We want it to read Alt 0 and we want it to also read uh, Alt 5. That is the alternate functions of the pins. Those of you that deal with microcontrollers or watch my other videos on microcontrollers, you'll know that lots of different microcontrollers have uh, pins that have multiple different features that are controlled by switches and software, okay? So we want the switches to be set to that. Now, normally when it's first boots, those are not set. Those are not set to Alt 5 and uh, Alt 0. We need to set those. So how do we do that? Well. Simple enough, we CD to the boot directory. And what we're gonna do is we're going to VI the config.txt file, okay? In the config.txt file, what we're going to do is we are going to add this line right here. And again, I'll put a link down in the description, but you just need to add this line right here. And what that's telling it is it's basically shifting those functions. It's making those, those different alternates. It's setting those switches is what it does. Now, you will uh, save that and you will reboot the device. Once you reboot the device, it should uh, have those set. If you do a GP, GPIO read all, you should see it like this. You see pin 18 is set to Alt 5, pin 13 is set to Alt 0. And that brings me to my next piece of information is we will be we will have to connect this up. Now I've got from a, like I said, I'll put a link down in the description. Here is a great uh, connecting diagram here. So you've got your pin 18, which by the way, pin 18 is pin 12 on the physical Raspberry Pi, okay? And pin 13 is physically pin 33, okay? So those of you that are wondering where this stuff is coming from, that's, that's a good way to see it. You're just gonna need some one microfarad caps. I would say these are the more critical capacitors because they're the ones that are going to help with the, the, the low pass of the circuit. So ba you're basically just creating a simple little low pass uh, filter, like a passive low pass filter. Um, it's nothing fancy, but it, it gets you by. Now, if you want, if you really want something, you probably have to put an amplifier on this, you know, like a DAC or something like that, that will, that will really clean this up and give you proper filtering and stuff. If you want it to sound amazing, once that is done, you may still get some quiet audio. I'll show you how to fix that. In here, I always turn it up because I mean, we're going to be hooking at the things and, and this thing doesn't exactly have like the greatest amplification in the universe. So I'm going to do type in ALSA mixer. And here you go, this is the system sound mixer, okay? So right now it has selected the Broadcom uh, BCM ALSA, that is the only sound card I have on here. Now, if you have an external sound card, like USB one that you plug in or something like that, you can press F6 and you can select it from here. Uh, if you have like a USB sound card, which probably would be better in this sense, uh, make it a whole lot better, but you would have to change up the config in uh, Mopify, you know, and whatnot. And it's just, it, I haven't gone that route, but I'm sure you could. Uh, so I just have the default. And all you do is use your arrow keys up and down to push this up and down. I'm literally just using my arrow keys. And I just cranked it to the max. Why not? And then all you have to do is just hit the escape key. And, and it saves. Like if I go back into it, it saves. It saves what I did. So that's how you max it out. Next thing you want to do is actually try to get it to work. So I think I have mine set up behind me here. I don't know if you can see the speakers, but it's set up behind me. Let's see if you guys can hear it. It's 
pretty good. It does work, okay? So now that that works, now that all that's set up, what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically duplicate that however many times that you want to on your different Raspberry Pis. Now, I had thought of the idea of cloning the image on the chip and moving it around. I would think that might be okay. So now what I need to do is I need to get my home assistant is what I need to do next. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into that bad boy. This is assuming that you have already gotten home assistant installed. And like I said, this is a home assistant that is installed on top of Raspbian. This is not the ha uh, IO or H-A-S-S-I-O. It's not that, okay? Because that one requires, like I said, add-ons and stuff that don't exactly work right. And it was, it was an absolute nightmare to use. So this server has home assistant already running on it. Um, all we're going to do is I'm going to uh, log in to everything. So let me let me get logged into the virtual environment. Okay, so got my virtual environment all set up here, or at least uh, logged into tilde slash dot home assistant. There we go. And then into our configuration. Sorry, I did that really fast. Configuration dot YAML file. Okay, so we're going to go into there now. Inside of here, like I said, this is just a demo, so it literally only has this configured. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up these different platforms, okay? So the first platform is going to be Snapcast. We're going to set it up on ourself, okay? And then we're going to set up an MPD, so Media Player Daemon. We want to connect uh, to ourself first of all, so that way we can control the Mopity that's residing on the server. So we set that up as ourself, and I just gave it the name Multi Room Controller, so that way when it shows up, it says Multi Room Controller. So this one will be the one that will be basically the Mopity that controls the streaming to all the other devices. Okay. Second one is going to be the platform MPD is going to be for one of my devices. I called that workbench. So that's the one behind me. So that's going to be that one. So that's going to be the controls, play, pause, fast forward, all that stuff. Then I'm going to set up one more for the other one. So you just see what I mean? You just keep setting these up for all the ones you want to control. You just keep setting them up, give them the IP address, uh, or at least give Home Assistant the IP address, and then it can control them. That's it for the Home Assistant config. Now we get into the Moppity config and things like that. So I'm going to exit out of the Home Assistant stuff. So now you're going to install Moppity exactly the same way, exactly the same way as we just did. So I'm not going to review that. Now, the only difference is on this one, you're going to be, uh, I'll do an LL, you're going to be putting the server side of Snap Server. Okay, so you're going to do Snap Server, not Snap Client. Okay. Same thing, you're gonna depackage it the exact same way. You're also going to uh, put it into the service the same exact way, uh, except you'll you, you'll say server, not not client. You know, just just as before. So so well, I'll I'll kind of run through it with you, uh, just 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 to make it real fast because it's just a couple of commands. So we're gonna CD to uh, the Etsy defaults folder, default sorry default folder, and then we're going to uh, VI the snap server file that's in here. Now the server options, no server options. There's, there's nothing. You just want the server to just run. Okay. So no server options. So basically we don't even have to configure that. So literally the only thing you have to do is do a sudo update dash RC dot D snap server defaults. Okay. That's it. Then that adds it to where it'll, it'll start on boot and same thing goes snap server status. And there we go. So there is the status of the Snap server. It runs like a service, okay? So that's literally all you have to do for the Snap server. Fairly straightforward, fairly easy. Um, Moppity, same thing. You, you go through the exact same procedure. There is literally nothing different. However, you in the uh, config, it's a little bit different. So let's take a look at that. So Etsy, uh, we're gonna go to the Moppity. Now, the config on this one is going to be a little bit different because the audio has to change, okay? So, the audio is going to be this huge, again, there's going to be links down in the description uh, for you to cut and paste this so you don't have to try to stare at the screen and type it all in. Uh, but the output is going to be different. It's going to be redirected to the Snapcast FIFO. FIFO stands for first in, first out, and it's going to be uh, redirected to that. ALSA Sync. 
That's for playing audio locally. Now we want to redirect the audio to go out. And the way we're going to send it out is through Snapcast. And the way that it sends it out is through the Snap FIFO, which is the first in, first out. And that is literally the only difference. You do the normal settings, the HTTP settings. So I believe that should be it. And once you restart your Home Assistant, you should then get a screen that looks something similar to this. If you are like me and you have self-configured your Lovelace, basically your, your interface here, I'll show you what to do because it won't just pop up. You'll add a card. You'll want the media play or media control card is what you're going to want. Okay. Inside that media control card, you will have the drop down options to choose your family room TV, multi-room controller, and then uh, the workbench one. Those are all the different instances of the MPD, the daemons, you know, that you want. And when you choose those, and that's how you would build your cards, then you'll get these cards that look like this. You know this one that's behind me. I'm gonna basically play it. You should be able to hear it. So this is on the workbench. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. It's pretty fast. And I can change songs. change songs um i think and if i want to change uh playlists if i want to change playlists i can come in here i can even adjust the volume i can mute it um down here here's your playlist it'll literally uh choose whichever playlist i've got a, i've got a Metall i'm a metallica fan but you can choose your different playlists down there it'll play them like i said you volume control and everything else you can even turn this thing on and off basically it'll disable or enable enable this now just so you know, if for some reason the Moppity instance doesn't connect, uh, like for instance, let me just show you, this is this is word to the wise, okay? So if in here, when you go to you know, the deal and you go to Mopify, if this is not connected, if it's disconnected down here, you go to your services and this is not connected, then this will be like grayed out. It'll be grayed out and it won't have the options and it won't work, okay? so. The service, the Spotify service has, or, or whatever it is, Cloud uh, cloud Connect or whatever it is, has to be connected and running before uh, you'll be able to control stuff, okay? So that's just word to the wise. That That's one of the issues that you can run across that can happen. So I'm avoiding questions. <laughs> Any case, so you do that now. If I press this multi-room controller, it should uh, come over here. So if I... Now that's playing through the multi-room controller. So I'm not on the specific one. I'm on the I'm on the server streaming it down to it. And I'll prove that. I'll grab a camera and we'll we'll kind of walk around the room. Okay, guys. So I've got the handheld here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play these individually. So I'm gonna go run over here to the family room. It's gonna be playing uh, some country. And then I'm going to get some bulletproof going over here. So as you can see, got this going. There's the little Raspberry Pi Zero right here. Um, there is our circuit. Let's get some light. All right, there's our circuit that we're using. There's our plug, okay? So there's that. Now if I walk over here, this should be playing. Of course, I may need to turn it up. Okay, so there we go. And then this is over here. Um, there's that circuit. And I just got it connected up right here, going on up and into the receiver. Fairly simple, but it does work. All right, so let's go back. And now I'm gonna pause that, pause that. Now I want this club music to go to both of them, okay? So now I'm gonna come here to my multi-room controller and I'm gonna hit play. So this is playing it now, can you hear it? So this one's playing. You also have this one playing it. Hear it. So I got both of them playing the same music streaming from the server. Okay, guys. Well, I hope I don't don't get demonetized for the music. Um, <laughs> I it may I may I may have let it play a little too long. So if this gets demonetized, that sucks. Um, I may have to re-record that. Any case, um, 
that's basically how you do that. Now, can you play files locally? Yes, in the links down below, you do not have to use Spotify if you don't want to. If you have your own local media directory or something like that, there is a way to set up local. Uh, it's in that Moppity config. In the Moppity config, you can set up your own local so that way uh, you can have whatever music available on each different piece, ton of music available on the server, however you wanna do it. But that is basically, in a nutshell, how you put this together. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you made it all the way to the end of the video. Please, if you did make it to the end of the video, please let me know if this was uh, this was a good idea or uh, let, let me know if this is something that interests you. I think I think I might actually, we may actually use this in my family. I, um, I, we were thinking about doing some outdoor music and this would be perfect. You get some Raspberry Pi Zeros, they're not very expensive. Um, hook it up to maybe some outdoor speakers, get a little amplifier. They make little tiny amplifiers that are fantastic and uh, put it out there. Or I may get one of those USB, uh, you know, USB, uh, whatever they are, audio cards or whatever, and see what that does. You know, I don't know. Interesting. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Like I said before, uh, we made it to 17,000 subscribers plus. This is absolutely amazing. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for staying all the way to the end and make sure to get t-shirts. We got t-shirts and all those different things. Make sure you check out my Reddit page. I'm going to try to get back into Maker Monday. I'm sorry. I've been, I've been lagging on that. I know, but, uh, definitely post there. I've seen a few of you post stuff that will definitely be in the next Monday. Uh, so we will definitely go over what you guys are working on because it's exciting to see what you guys do. So definitely head over to the Reddit, Reddit page, post what you're working on. We'll talk about it on Monday and I will see you in the next video.